So I pulled out at that point. And when I got back to England, finally, I went to see a cardiologist and they mm. diagnosed me with cardiomyopathy. So mm. a lot of run, ultra runners do have, you know, sort of an enlarged heart. Yes. Got. Um, and, um, but that's not really an excuse for not finishing hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> really not. <laughs> back with another gotta run racing episode absolutely and today is actually black canyon day so we're playing it secretly in our <laughs> laptop on the side here so we can keep track go canada go yeah so exciting to watch mm. anyways what's new norm what is new well you're what's new for you you're the one who's doing all the training uh this month getting ready for your big adventure yeah run the rocks is two weeks two weeks today <laughs> wow, that's come up quick. <laughs> I can't wait to just start drinking while, while you're running. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. Listen, the crew's not allowed to drink until the race is over. Isn't that the rule? <laughs> that is the rule, mm -hmm. but I have my own rules. Okay. What's happening in the world of Gotta Run Racing? Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, you might notice something new. These awesome mics. <laughs> Yes, we have some new bling in the house. We sure do. And we have a secret Patreon supporter to thank for that. Mm. So thank you, secret Patreon supporter. Yes. If you'd like to become a supporter of the podcast and the YouTube channel, head on over to our website. There's a link there. You can sponsor us for as little as two bucks a month, I think. Two or three bucks? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a, instead of getting that coffee at Tim Hortons, there you eh, go. a little... Throw a gutter on racing a little toony. <laughs> well, it helps. Look what it's already I know, done. It's I know. bought it's, us this equipment. So it's just uh, everything that comes our way goes right back into the show. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get right to it. Who do we have on the show today, you ask? Yeah, who do we have on the show today? We have David Ross, who's a originally from Zimbabwe, living in Surrey, UK. And what a resume this man has. I don't know where to begin with this guy. I... It, we can literally talk to him for a month, but let's just break it down to an hour. Yeah, we did have to um, refine the list a little, so hopefully we've picked the right things to talk about. But in just over 19 years of running, he's completed over 133 ultra marathons, 158 trail marathons, and 170 road marathons, which averages to about two races a month. In the last 20 years. In the last 20 years. Right. So he's also a race director of Hermes Running Race Series in Surrey and Kent. And he's got a couple of goals that we're going to chat about today. Well, he's also on the list of the World Ultra Running Marathon list that he has over 100. Um, the most races? Yeah. yeah, he's what? Over 100 ultras, over 100 marathons, over 100 trail marathons. marathons. Yeah. And you get on this amazing list. That's right. <laughs> so he's... Uh, not stopping. No. Nope. He wants to get to the one big level. <laughs> well, let's get to it. Here is David Ross. <laughs> nice to finally meet you. Yeah. yeah, same with you. Well, let's get started. So for our listeners, if they listen to our episode with Paul Reeder, they'll remember how we were introduced to you in the fact that you had both agreed to sign up for a race in Oregon, I believe, called Mountain Lakes. Mountain Lakes, and yeah. He signed up and you didn't? Is that how the story well, goes? It all got it slightly twisted there because what it was, I was running the Marrakesh Marathon at the time. Okay. And that was on the Sunday, I think, that he signed up. It's because it's always um, on the, at the end of uh, January. And that's when the lottery opened for the Mountain Lakes 100. So it was on the same day as I was actually running the Marrakesh Marathon. Okay. So, and then I, I came on on Monday morning, first thing, and I thought, oh, I better sign up now because obviously you think, oh, you know, you, you've got plenty of time. You know, it wasn't like the Western States or Leadville or one of these iconic, you know, really big marathon, 100 milers. So anyway, um, of course, when I got to, to try and sign up, they, they'd closed the entry portal. And I said wow. to Paul, I can't get in now. 
you know. So, so you're yeah. going on your own date, you know. <laughs> but couldn't you sign up while you're doing your marathon with your phone as yeah, you're yeah. running? Take your little iPad while you're running the marathon. Yeah, could have done. I mean, that looking back in hindsight, we should have had a unanimous agreement that we should have just signed up for one another, whoever's first on the button, you know. There you go. Well, we that... to run. But hey, it wasn't to be. So, you know, well, that just proves there's three sides to every story, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go back to the very beginning, which really, considering the amount of races you've raced, uh, isn't really that long ago, 19, 20 years ago. When and why did you start running, David? I think I had a bit of a cathartic exorcism when I had a bike accident when I was 18 years old on my way to school. So I was sort of like, I, I, I didn't really do much in the way of sport at school. I mean, I was pretty good, but not, you know, sort of anyone special. And, uh, you know, that sort of like shook me up a bit because I did three somersaults over the back of the car and landed on my coccyx. Oh, my knee went into the side of the car. So I was lucky I didn't hit the actual, you know, strut going down at the back of the car. Mm -hmm. Had to write my final matric exams that day, which was actually Afrikaans because I was educated in South Africa, which I <laughs> don't know how, but I went to home and got some whiskey and then went to the exam room and put my leg up on a chair, <laughs> wrote the exam and managed to pass. I don't know how. <laughs> and, uh, but that sort of, I suppose that could have been something to do with, you know, sort of wanting to start running. Plus the fact that my dad, who sadly passed away in October last year, mm. was always my inspiration for, for getting out early in the morning because I was brought up sort of in Zimbabwe and then we moved over to Durban in South Africa. We used to run in the morning, dad and I, in the sugar cane. Oh, wow. As the sun, African sun was rising, you know, just picture that, you know, I mean, you know what the beautiful sunrises are that you get all over the world. And, you know, there's just nothing more enthusing than watch that sun coming up in the morning and your dad taking you out for a run, you know. <laughs> so I still got fond memories of that, you know. And, um, you know, it's always been something that sort of gives you the ultimate freedom, I think. And I think it becomes almost a religion to us, really. You know, mm. it's very cathartic. You know, it's yeah. like our form of yoga, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So that gets taken away from you. You've got a, a sort of really bitter pill to swallow, you know. So <laughs> you've got to reinvent yourself. So uh, that's the hard part. It's all a six inches game, isn't it? Yes, yeah. you're right. The high, between the ears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But because you've done so many, we had to really handpick what really sparked our interest. Okay. So... Let's first talk about the Berlin Wall race. Okay. The miler. Yeah. Th that was, is it a race or is it more of a historical track or is it because you pay tribute to everything, the history of it all? Tell us about this race, the Berlin Wall race. Uh, the Berlin 100 miler is an epic race because basically they set that up to commemorate those that have actually lost their lives, you know, when they, you know, when the, before the wall came down. Mm hmm. And it's a very flat foot race, and it's all basically on tarmac. So mm -hmm. it's actually a very fast 100 miler. And it's probably one of the most well organized 100 milers I've ever done, mm -hmm. hand on heart. You know, absolutely wow. amazingly organized. The checkpoints are, are fantastic and very well supported, you know, with great marshals, loads to eat. You can't get lost on that. Even I can't get lost. <laughs> I'm very good at getting lost at 100 miles. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was quite a, a good one to do, actually. And I did pretty well at that. I was seventh overall, actually, and uh, did quite well at that particular one. Finished in about 16 hours, 59 minutes. Wow, that's but, quick. Um, it, is, it is a flat race. It's not like running Western or Leadville or Wasatch or one of these much tougher hundreds that we obviously know about in the U.S., and um yeah and then obviously the, the history about it is mm -hmm. you know, every year they actually commemorate one life someone that's passed oh wow and they have that person's picture up at the race you know wow and so it's very moving actually definitely one for the bucket list yeah you know? and and how much of the course goes along where the berlin wall existed yeah quite a bit of it okay. but obviously there's only really checkpoint charlie that you get to see where the actual berlin wall is because the rest has been ripped down really right mm -hmm. so you're not you do run a, a actual down the actual berlin wall for quite some time hmm. where the former site of the berlin wall was wow but you don't obviously get to see much of it you know because there's not yeah. much of it, but checkpoint charlie is past there which was actually quite quite moving actually yeah i'm sure it was 
do the runners yeah, the Germans they organize everything really well I mean I've done the Rennsteig Lauf you know which is another 80k race you know in the Thuringian mountains you know and that's a, a point-to-point race mm. also very well organized you know their technology yeah. and their organizing of races goes hand in hand you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to be careful because I've got a German girlfriend as well so there's <laughs> the Darling, you're very organized. <laughs> do, the, the do the runners at the Berlin Wall race, do they they stop and, and pay tribute to any memorial plaques along the way? Is there stuff like that? Or they are, yeah. There are some yeah. plaques along the way. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. But that, that's I I just love I'm a history buff, actually. so I think that would be definitely yeah. one I would try to get to. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, the good thing is you can actually have your pacer on a bicycle as well. Oh, and, wow. You know, the good news is um, you can actually run it without even a hydro pack on. So oh. basically, they do allow muling, which is very. Oh, important. okay. But you don't actually have to run with a pack on because your pacer can actually be on a bike beside you. Oh, on the ring awesome. side up because it's all pretty much paved. Right. There's no trail bits at all, actually, on that. And, um, you know, apart from sort of little trails along the sort of lakes there that run through mm. the center of Berlin. So it's really quite a beautiful race, actually. Yeah. Listen, Dorm, don't ask me, fast. don't ask me to pace you on a bike because I think I'd rather run a hundred <laughs> yeah. miles than bike a hundred miles. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Another one that popped up on your results that I have to admit neither one of us had heard of, but it has a really unique story behind it, is the Eco Trail Paris 80k. Okay. Um, which I'm just going to mention for our listeners, it's a series that was started in 2007 in Paris, uh, which the purpose was to allow runners to discover a city while respecting the environment. It's since grown to about 13 cities around the world. And Mm. you've done Paris more than once, I believe? Yeah, I've done Paris uh, about four times and the Brussels one as well. I haven't done any of the other ones, but they've got them all over the world. They've got one in Madeira, Norway. Portugal, you know, sort of uh, these little places, and uh, yeah, it's very, so very us, well organized. Yeah, tell us about that because it—I understand it's mostly urban trails mm. and pavement. Well, the Eco Trail is great because you start sort of eighty kilometers outside Paris, and you get the train out there first thing in the morning. I got the train from near where the Eiffel Tower was. Imagine that the expo is right by the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Yeah, was believe it. <laughs> you know, it's an amazing, you know, iconic sort of place, as you obviously know. Yeah. And you get on that train and off you head, you know, to this sort of like lovely rural area outside Paris. And it's sort of a mass start. And they've got different distances, you know, that start at different times and everything. And obviously I was doing the 80K. Mm-hmm. Started in a big park and there was some sort of circus going on quite close by us. So it was all quite cryptic, but it was very, <laughs> very interesting to watch at the same time. <laughs> And then you run sort of through these lovely forests, basically, all the way through, um, probably for about 50 kilometers. Hmm. And then you eventually start getting to suburbia on the suburban outskirts of Paris. And um, I think the most um, alarming time I ever did it was, I think, in 2016. And I was running along and I was doing pretty well. I was sort of about 40th or something in the in the overall standings and we did get some pretty good runners in in that from different parts of the world including people training for things like utmb obviously just getting their speed base up right so um at about 52 kilometers into the race i was herring down this quite big slope vertiginous slope and managed to catch a sort of a tree trunk trunk standing out of the ground and i went flying you know and sort of landed on my right shoulder and then of course I stood up knew something was wrong and then I could I put my hand to where my shoulder was and couldn't actually feel that I the oh, shoulder was oh, the whole, no. so of course the, the whole shoulder had popped right out and my arm was sort of right back you know behind my back you know it's like, oh. Oh, crumbs, you know I think I've got a bit of an injury here you know <laughs> and obviously I was just wearing this sort of tight fitting skin stock and some you know sort of um shorts and it was quite a cold day it was about five degrees with a sort of a quite a, a strong headwind so it brought the you know with the wind chill it was down to about zero Ooh. so I was really disappointed because I was sitting quite well and I thought you know what I'm gonna grin and bear it and off I go and try and sort of carry on but obviously I was starting to shiver and then the shock takes over 
Yeah. I managed to find my way to this little town in the middle of God knows where. And then I uh, got into a doctor's surgery. God knows how I found it, but I found a doctor's <laughs> surgery. Wow. Managed to persuade these people, always covered in mud and, you know, arm hanging back, you know, to go to the front of the queue, as you do. Yes. And there was a diminutive little French lady doctor. And I sort of tried to, you know, sort of in broken French, ask her if she could put my arm over the back of an armchair that she had in the waiting room. Oh. And sort of pull the the shoulder and get it back in again you know so I could carry on you know with the race yeah yeah of course you do that, as, as you do you know of course <laughs> you don't want to give up at that point do you, you know, no. even if you come last you know i think you i think <laughs> this is where killian got the idea at hard rock right he saw <laughs> he read your blog yeah <laughs> i don't know actually but he said tough he would run with his arm wherever it was anyway i'll kill you yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so long story short, didn't manage to get them to do it. Then they called the ambulance and they couldn't do it either because I was flinching and wincing as you do, you know, while they were trying to hoik it perpendicularly. So eventually I got chucked into the back of the, the ambulance and taken to Versailles Hospital. Oh. And, of course, then they said, okay, we're going to have to anaesthetize you and then we'll keep you in overnight. So they cut the skin stop off with a pair of surgical scissors. Ouch. And gave me the old anesthetic. And then, of course, um, I, I, I got the arm put back in, woke up. There was a lovely French nurse standing over me, so immediately I felt better. <laughs> and... <laughs> well, we're going to definitely do that one too, right? Yeah, I re that's definitely on my list now. Yeah. I don't know about the 80K, but maybe the, the shorter distance, because I'd like to do multiple cities. It sounds like such a great hmm. series. It's a beautiful and well-organized event. I mean, the Eco Trail is the flagship of all the Eco Trail races. And the one in Brussels is very nice too, actually. Yeah. But uh, those are the only two I've done. I think the one in Madeira is quite tough. It sort of emulates the mutt, you know. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Madeira like, hmm. Ultra Trail type thing. Yeah. It's actually quite a toughie, you know, but obviously the scenery in Madeira is very scenic. And then they've got one in Sweden as well and one in Iceland. Yeah. So they've got, you, you can take your pick of pick of the crop, really. You know. Yeah. I, I think I noticed Porto, uh, Portugal, hmm. which I thought Probably. would be beautiful because it's such mm. a beautiful city so yeah let's get that well, on the list great because you can drink port afterwards because that's where <laughs> there you go. Yeah, if you're well. a port drinking lady you'll be in your element there <laughs> <laughs> every every time we do a chat on a podcast our bucket list gets bigger Long. and bigger yeah, longer and sure it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many races in the world i know i know and let's yeah. talk about the next race which you mentioned before was comrades yeah let's let's talk about comrades how many times did you do it well i've done it 15 times mm. i first started running in 2000 um the first time i ever did it was i did about 10 hours 36 minutes and i was just all over the place really i didn't really know how to run ultras properly then mm. that was my first big ultra i suppose 56 mm. miles you know it was from durban that particular one was sorry from maritzburg to durban the down right. run down. Which completely okay. thrashes your quads. <laughs> um, it's about 89 kilometers, and we actually finished in the Kings Park Stadium. We started Scottsville, like horse racing course. Mm. Um, and then you run all the way down, and the last 15 kilometers, you can start seeing the Durban be you know, beachfront, you know, the Indian Ocean, and you yes. start getting excited, you know. <laughs> and then you're sort of nearly at the point where you, you know, you're going, okay, well, I'm just about there now, but you're not quite there. But the thing about that race is um, it's still quite warm because it's usually run in June. We'll be mm -hmm. running again this year. Mm. And, um, yeah, the down run certainly is is a tough one to do. And I didn't really know how to pace myself. Mm. So I got to Drummond, which is about 27 and a half miles in, just over a marathon, about a mile over a marathon. And I was already starting to cramp. So I thought this is going to be a really tough day in the saddle, you know. Yeah. And then at one point, I just carried on about 20 kilometers down the road. Someone threw a Coke bottle, rolled a Coke bottle on the road in front of me, one of these big plastic Coke bottles. Yeah. And I jumped over it. Both legs went at the same time. Massive cramps. And oh, no. it took me about 15 minutes to, to sort of massage out the cramps. And basically, it was a death, basically a death march for the last bit of the race. Oh. When I finished, I just virtually got pot, went over the sort of finishing line and I collapsed. <laughs> the medics came with the stretcher because it looks like a war zone at the end of Comrades. Anyone <laughs> will, yeah, it really does. 
<laughs> um, put me on the old stretcher. And I had to be given IV drips. So I was basically, you know, peeing blood a lot, you know. And yeah. um, mm. I had near renal failure, really. Oh, gosh. So I put me on the IV drips for a while. Then after about two litres of saline dextrose, sent me off to go and see if I could wee again. And it was all red. Mm. So wow. said, you've still got a bit of kidney damage, you know, so you better go back on. So gave me another two. And I was just shaking uncontrollably and, and getting very cold as well. You know, mm-hmm. body starts shutting down very low pulse rate and everything. So I was sort of like quite scared after that. You know, and I thought, no, nah, I'm never doing comrades again. No, nah, that's it. No, no more ultras. You know? <laughs> <laughs> famous and, last words. Uh, famous last words. So. But you know, comrades in terms of spirit um, is just something that you will never probably surpass, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you sing Shosha Loza at the start and you sing the national anthems and then Aww. you hear the chariots of fire music being played. Aww. And the Max <laughs> Trip from Cockrow, which starts just before the actual start of the race, you know. Yeah. It just puts goosebumps all the way up your back, you know. And, I'm getting um, them now, just talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> you watch those videos and you'll be hooked, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, let's move on to Yeah, we obviously have to talk about Western States. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And what was your one ticket race that you did to get your name into Western States? Let's talk about the ticket race first, then Western States. Well, in 2011, I went out with my wife, Mel. And in those days, you had sort of country representation. So I sort of, I, I put my name down. My, my birthplace was Zimbabwe, Ferrari, right. Zimbabwe. And I managed to get in as a Zimbabwean. Ah, so okay. I did Western States then. Um, my first hundred miler. I mean, goodness knows why you want to pick Western states as your first. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a bit uh, pushing the boat out a bit. But of course, you unanimously decided, oh, it can't be that difficult, you know. It's only um, eight thousand six hundred feet at Immigrant Park. It's the highest point. That's, that's a walk in the park, isn't it? It's not like yeah. that, you know. <laughs> so uh, Mel and I decided we'd go out to run this, and then, of course, um, yours truly decided, no. It's First hundred mile, you've got to get a sub twenty four. You know, it's not just about finishing it; it's about getting a sub twenty four. You know, <laughs> talk about an ego trip. Obviously, Mel was a bit more sort of practical about it, and she wanted to finish it. And um, so I got to seventy eight miles, and over Rocky Chucky, I see cold water. We had to wade through on that point. Yep. And. Um, Oh, I was I was in a, just not feeling good, you know. After that, I was sort of like getting chest pain, and I was mm. urinating regularly. And I was I'd been taking quite a lot of salt pills as well, so you would have thought that I would. And my body weight was actually increasing. I wasn't actually losing oh. weight. I was oh, dear. So I was retaining too much liquid, and then mm-hmm. eventually sort of get rid of it. But I couldn't get rid of all these chest pains, and I thought, God, there must be something strange going on with me now, and. Mm. Um, said to my pace, he was actually quite a good runner. I said, I definitely don't think I'm going to be able to carry on. I'm sort of starting to have these out of body experiences. And it was about 78 miles in. So I thought, God, I've still got a ways to go, you know. Yeah. Been running for about 18 and a half hours by then. So plenty of time on the clock. But I just couldn't get get going, you know. Um, so I pulled out at that point. And when I got back to England, finally, I went to see a cardiologist. And they diagnosed mm-hmm. me with cardiomyopathy. So mm. a lot of run, ultra runners do have, you know, sort of an enlarged heart. Yes. What? Um, and um, but that's not really an excuse for not finishing hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> really not. <you> know? <laughs> so don't have to shed any tears for me, and I'm not asking for any sympathy. <laughs> but the funny thing was, my wife Mel at the time, she went on and she did a 29 and a half hours. So nice. She, and we had a pacer for her, and she did really well. And awesome. she was so chuffed, wearing a Western States T-shirt there. <laughs> and then, of course, it was time to go home on the plane. <laughs> and I was so sad that I hadn't finished. I said, no, nope, you're not allowed to wear that T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I don't want to see your medal. I don't want to see that buckle, you know. And I uh, knew I had a score to settle, you know, um, a big score. So Absolutely. Lucky enough, two years later to get back in. This time as a South African. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. I, they must have stopped doing that, right? Yeah, they've stopped doing it. It's just a ballot now. Hey, right. So okay. Ballot 
uh, got back to Western States in 2013. So how did you get? Oh, I see. So you didn't have, you didn't have to do a ticket race to get no. To the, no, you just went in. Okay. Back in those days, we were quite lucky. I mean, if you we just sort of did have names in the hat, but they still had two people, usually two representatives from each country. Yeah. So let's say it was only say three from Zimbabwe or three from South Africa, and you had a, like sixty six percent chance of getting in. Oh, okay. I got in the second time in twenty thirteen. It obviously wasn't as difficult in those days as it obviously is now. Right. You know? And, um, yeah, I managed to get back there and, thought, okay, this time I'm going to really make it work, you know, done mm-hmm. all the training, did some really fast marathons, blah, 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 and um, off we went. And I was just so focused, you know, and um, I had a very good pacer. And, um, yeah, I got the job done in 22.38. So I got myself nice. buckled up and settled the score. Happy days. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came was... home on the plane with a Cheshire Cat smile. I can show you. <laughs> and that was the year that? Timothy Olsen beat Rob Carr. So that was a big year. Yep. That was a Got to meet Tim at the end of the race. And uh, yeah, what a lovely guy he is, you know, and his wife and his little child. And yep. uh, obviously Tim's had a, a, a past, you know, um, mm-hmm. before he became an ultra runner of note, you know. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he is such a character and, and a real champion. So it was quite a privilege to meet him and obviously Gordy Ainsley. And- <laughs> <laughs> My friend Ian Sharman, who's obviously done nine top ten finishes, was there. You know, yes. we did pacing together at Mount Talek, You know, with Ian, and he's uh, obviously the official coach now for Western States, you know, and director of Sky Running. So, yeah, very good. Um, very good. That's nice. Nice being out there with all these lovely people. And I met mean, <laughs> Greenwood in a bagel shop. Did you know? <laughs> and I didn't even know who she was. Oh gosh. <laughs> That was humiliating. But anyway, <laughs> I've won, I've won comrades. Ah, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, Ellie, if you're listening, I'm sorry about that. Well, <laughs> we're going to tag her now. We're going to tag yeah, her. We're going to exactly. tag her. Go to this mo- this minute yeah. mark in the podcast. Yeah. See if you remember yeah. this guy who, who dissed you in the bagel shop. <laughs> in the bagel shop, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But well, ultra runners are such humble people, you know, of course. Yes. <laughs> we want to get on to some uh, honorable mentions, but before we do, um, obviously in 23 years, you've had your fair share of injuries and, and major ones at that with your knees, but you're 55, you're still doing it, you're still going for it, you have, you have some goals to still reach. So what advice do you have for people that might be down because they're going through injury and haven't competed in a while, but still want to be in the game what, what what do you have advice for that because obviously you've probably gone through some pretty high highs and some pretty low lows in your Definitely, journey yeah. Yeah. Hmm. and i think you know obviously the long and short is that most ultra runners at some point in their ultra running career will actually have injuries you know i mean we are only human and you've really got to see the light at the end of a long dark tunnel because psychologically it beats you up you know mm. You feel like you've been floored by a left hook from Mike Tyson, you know, um, and and that's that that can't be pleasant, you know. So you don't really know how to deal with, but you've sort of got to. I think you've sort of got to reinvent yourself. So I've mm-hmm. had to do quite a lot of that recently, and I've been going to the gym quite frequently, mm-hmm. and turning into a bit of an arnie. Not quite that big yet, but <laughs> I'm working on it. And then uh, sort of getting into a bit of gravel biking, you know. Oh, okay. So yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of guys. Anton Kapitschka, for one of them, who's obviously yep. been injured quite badly. Jeff Rose, people like that. Who and actually Rob Carr, it. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah Rob. Yeah, Rob he was, he had his knee reconstructed, didn't he? Yeah. And then went back to win level. Yep. yep. Um, but obviously, they go through a long, dark tunnel, and they've got to reinvent themselves. And I guess whatever it is that you love doing, you've got to sort of go sideways with that. Mm. And actually try and find something else that gives you some modicum of satisfaction, like biking or swimming, you know, um, belly dancing, whatever it is. You know? so, but keep moving is the key. So, yeah, keep moving. Yeah. <laughs> and probably reading inspirational books because it, it's happened to most people at some point or another, hasn't it? So, it has, yeah. And uh, I guess that's probably the only way you can really sort of be positive and make a positive step forward and hopefully get over your injury in due time and get back on the saddle and keep riding your horse into the sunset. I hope all the best for you. Yeah, thanks. And you too. Nice to speak to you both. Thanks for having me on your show. 
Cheers. Thank you. Well, it was a pleasure. Absolute <laughs> pleasure. We'll stay in touch. Yeah, yeah definitely. We'd okay. love that. Yeah. Okay, Cheers, care. David. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Get too okay. cold. Cheers. Bye now. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, that conversation could on could have gone on a lot longer. We barely scratched the surface with all the races he's done. I know it. <sighs> Honorable mentions, a uh, hundred of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know what to say. Great storyteller and funny. I've never heard the expression "fit as a butcher's dog." I'm gonna have to look that one up. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> and every race we did chat about. There was a story to tell about it, or something happened, falling down, or <laughs> not knowing who Ellie Greenwood was, or <laughs> how he DNF'd Western and then yes. had to go back. Yes. Yeah, it's just yeah. unbelievable. And he just came into the golden hour at Leadville. It just goes on and on. Yeah. Well, as it does when you get into these <laughs> long races. But wow, fascinating. We and, we and, sorry. <laughs> and we didn't even chat about marathons. No, we just we stuck didn't to chat about marathons. We just stuck to our our niche. Yeah. And marathon is a whole other podcast. Whoever wants to take him up on marathon, yeah, <laughs> go for it. Because yeah. I'm sure there's lots of stories there too. Oh boy. But definitely wish him well with the knee surgeries and hope that he can continue running. Get back in the game. He has one more E E A. Yeah, environmental. I don't know where I got that from. <laughs> But economical agency european blah, blah, blah. he has one more <laughs> marathon to do there he's got to get it done he, come on he will okay he will yeah all right thanks and, for listening until next time cheers <laughs>